So Harold Bloom has been uh, posting some videos over on the Amazing Atheist channel, and recently he posted uh, a couple videos about entropy and how he he feels like um, many popularizers of science and e uh, even the original formulators of the laws of thermodynamics um, will often uh, overextend uh, the explanatory power of this theory. Um, they will try to describe the entire universe as an entropic system and say that it's running down, uh, that it is headed um, towards a heat death. Um, and uh, Bloom was express expressing his frustration with this perspective because, you know, as we all know, the laws of thermodynamics, uh, the second law of entropy uh, in particular, um, only applies to closed systems and there are no such systems in the universe that we know and experience. All systems here in this actual world are open. They're exchanging energy constantly with their environments. Um, and so I think, you know, Bloom is right about this. I just wanted to post a response to um, add something that I think he's leaving out. You know, there are plenty of um, biologists in the contemporary world who are trying to understand uh, the relationship between the tendency of biological evolution to run up uh, versus the tendency of physical processes to run down. And they have kind of uh, offered a sort of descriptive generalization of the original theory of, of thermodynamics, uh, especially of entropy, and they've described it, instead of as a tendency toward disorder, um, they've described it as uh, a law that applies to the way that um, energy gradients behave. Um, in other words, you know, and I'll give an example of an energy gradient, the one that all life on Earth depends upon, namely the gradient between, uh, you know, the temperature of, of deep space uh, and the temperature of Earth as it reflects the sunlight that streams in um, from the sun. So th there's, a, there's a huge gradient there. I think the you know, space is about 1.7 Kelvin and you know, the surface of the Earth is, well today it's about 65 degrees and uh, as a result of the difference here, um, the Earth, the, the matter and energy on the surface of the Earth uh, has a tendency to want to um, dissipate that disequilibrium in temperature. So the cold energy, um, you know, the, the the heat that reaches that that uh, forms on the surface as a result of their you know effects of sunlight radiates into deep space. And as it turns out, um, there are more or less effective ways of radiating this heat back into space, um, and these contemporary biological thinkers, theoretical biologists really, will account for this upward, upward trend of biological evolution as a result of the matter and energy on the surface of the Earth trying to more efficiently dissipate that gradient um, between the coldness of space and the heat of Earth reflecting sunlight. So, you know, the whole course of evolution from bacteria to photosynthesizing organisms and plants um, to multicellular animals uh, and to intelligent or you know what we like to think of as intelligent species like uh, homo sapiens who you know with the industrial revolution have continued this process that began with the first bacterial forms of life of um, metabolizing energy at a faster rate than would have otherwise been possible had the earth remained rock um, we're able to dissipate this huge gradient faster, uh, and human beings are no exception to this this rule um, of, of you know the tendency of energy to dissipate gradients to move from disequilibrium to equilibrium, um, because the human industrial project has you know liberated more of the free energy available uh, on the surface of the planet and just below that surface in the terms of fossil fuels and coal and whatnot. We've liberated more of that free energy than any other species would have even been able to dream of. Um, so we've discovered means, industrial means, of um, dissipating the 
free energy or exergy as uh, contemporary thermodynamic thinkers call it uh, from the earth and turning it into entropy into useless energy um, energy that's that's been returned to equilibrium so life is it, it might seem at first a sort of non-equilibrium uh, system a system that runs counter to the law of entropy as it's understood generally um, but while it is true that it is life is a kind of disequilibrium um, in the otherwise entropic flow of energy in the universe this equilibrium this disequilibrium ultimately serves uh, the law of entropy at the end of the day right because at the end of the day life uh, becomes more complex and metabolizes more energy only in order to return this energy gradient between earth and space and the sun to zero so at the end of the day we actually living we living creatures serve the law of entropy so there's a way in which we can understand um, the laws of thermodynamics such that they are no longer merely destructive but that we, we understand them to be also a source of creativity um, and to lead to various kinds of novel emergence in the course of the history of the universe um, so when we really start to think about what entropy entails it doesn't lead to the kind of grim picture of, of the universe as a, a poorly designed machine you know in other words not a perpetual motion machine but a machine that breaks and runs out of energy and eventually dies a, a heat death um, we can see that entropy actually uh, is way more of a mysterious tendency um, already a kind of um, imminent teleology you know it, it's a directionality to the universe that even the most reductionistic physicist will admit um, and from that basic form of directionality all the other forms of intentionality and eventually consciousness become more um, understandable I think and and can be explained in terms of of entropy uh, so you know those are some reflections uh, of my own I could be totally off base on all of this which uh, Harold Bloom of course has been accused of by some physicists and other laymen who have no idea what they're talking about either so you know we're just throwing idea ideas around here playing around but um, you know I'll post some links to some uh, essays that I've written about this topic Biolog biological evolution and thermodynamics and whatnot um, so I'd appreciate hearing uh, some reflections on what I had to say thanks for listening